You are listening to Harford County Living Podcast with Rich Bennett and Sarah Coleman. If this is your first time listening, then thank you for coming. The Harford County Living Podcast is produced every month for your enjoyment and show notes are found at harfordcountyliving.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter at Harco Living and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now, let's join Rich, Sarah, and their special guest. All right, welcome to the Harford County Living Podcast again. We got a full table this week, um, or this month, I should say. Unfortunately, Sarah couldn't make it because she's sick, so hopefully she'll be better and be back with us again next month. Uh, we have Tammy and Caroline from the United Way of Central Maryland, the Harford County Family Stability Program. Did I get that right? That's right. All right. And Julie and Katie from the Family and Children's Service Medical Adult Daycare Program. That is right? correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now I said my word limit, so I'm done. Uh, <laughs> a couple things real quick. Of course, the holidays are coming up. Um, and Sarah, our co-host, who's not here, I wanted to let everybody listening know about it if because hopefully this will be up in time but um if you need your christmas lights put up call uh four seasons nursery and landscape services they do it i know there's a lot of houses three stories high or whatever and people don't want to get up on the ladders but they'll do it for you they even provide lights and everything so go ahead and give them a call um tammy and no we're gonna go with julie and katie first uh tell us about the family and children's service medical adult daycare Okay. Don't bring tears to my yeah. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a happy place. It is a happy place. Um, we have been there for over 30 years. Um, up at the, uh, In Bel Air? Well, at the Harper Community College, yeah. We've been on their campus, wow. okay. um, our facility, and um, we provide care to um, Harper County elderly. Um, they come and spend the day with us Monday through Friday from 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Um, we provide transportation. Um, to and from our facility. We have several caregivers or family members that drop off. Um, we provide meals. Um, they come in, um, have breakfast with us, um, then they Meals on Wheels delivers lunch to them, and then they'll have a snack in the afternoon. We um, have a full day of activities planned for them. It uh, goes between mental and um, physical activities. Um, we have a Zumba instructor that comes in every now and then. <laughs> it's hysterical. They sit in their chair and they do Zumba. It's adorable. <laughs> they do trivia games, um, you know, to help with their memory. Um, most of them, oh, they start at 55 plus. So um, they all have, you know, the, the memory games are geared towards like when, you know, they were growing up. Right. Just to, uh, you know, bring back memories of you know, I don't know, the Beatles, <laughs> or, you know, things that they grew up with, yes, right? Yes, that's, good, they, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> they do, um, you know, finish that sentence games. It's, 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 huh. they, they have a good time. They make friendships. Um, there's a lot of social uh, interaction between the clients. They have friends. They're, they have smiling faces coming in. When I've been there, out. they interact with the child care, with children, right? And they do that I'd also. Love that. The kids come down and visit um, the clients. They do, um, like Halloween trick or treating, right. or they do Christmas songs. Crafts oh, that's stuff. great! Yeah, too. so we're right down the hall from the early learning center of the the college. Mm-hmm. Now, what? Okay, now you said seniors, but what is it a certain type of senior that can only go there? Or I mean, it's not like your senior centers. I mean, what's the right. criteria for somebody to go to go there? You want to take over? There? Sure. So um, traditionally, we get seniors that are no longer appropriate for senior centers okay. um, because we're able to provide a higher level of care. Our staff are certified nursing assistants, um, and then we have two registered nurses as well. So okay. um, they're providing traditionally a higher level of care. Right. Um, senior centers are more for independent folks that are able to sort of come and go on their own and don't really need supervision. Right. Um, the medical is adult daycare program is really geared towards folks that might need some supervision during the day, um, might need finger check, finger stick checks, um, so might need glucose, they might be diabetic, um, they might need medication management, so they need somebody to give them their medication during the day, um, they might need help going to the bathroom, they may need their food cut up. Um, about 70% of our folks have some form of dementia, um, so memory loss um, is pretty prevalent with the clients that we serve. 
Um, so which, traditionally, we get those that are are no longer appropriate for the senior centers. Which, with the trivia and the kids visiting, I mean, that's yes. perfect. I yes, mean, nice. absolutely. I, I didn't even think about it to, to when you said the kids, because a lot, I guess a lot of times that could strike a memory too. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, are right, you guys been there thirty years? Now, do you get a lot of volunteers, or <laughs> or do you need volunteers? Yeah, we always need volunteers. Uh, I was yeah, going to say, how can, how can people volunteer? Two volunteers that have been there for a very a long, long time. time. They come five days a week. Um, we have some ladies that come in maybe, you know, once a week or, right. you know, twice a month. But we're always looking for volunteers. Always, especially to do um, activities with the clients. So um, our longtime volunteers help with activities, but they do work in the kitchen as well. Right. Um, but we're always, we don't provide one-on-one um, care, but we're always looking for people that can do small groups or lead entertainment um, or do something fun like the Zumba or the Tai yeah. Chi um, for the older adults. So we always welcome volunteers. Now, if someone was a volunteer, how do they get a hold of you? They can call me. <laughs> <laughs> call Julie. We all hear that, right? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. And mm-hmm. hey, what's the number? It's 410-838-3222. And they can just ask for Julie. All right. Quick question for you. Um, with Because of the trivia and everything, do you guys ever do anything? You mentioned the Beatles. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> any uh, musicians or whatever come well, in? We do. Today we have Mr. – is it today? It's tomorrow. Mr. Charisma is coming in, and he comes in every now and then, and he sings songs, like, uh, of different eras. Okay. So he'll impersonate Elvis. Or oh, really? <laughs> and he'll dance too. Yeah, we have yeah we have lots of entertainers. We've yeah. been that plays the harp. The harp is um, the they, Yeah, they, they love like music. Mm-hmm. They love music. Um, now, do you ever have dances for them or anything? We had a stock hop last week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the Bel Air Lions Club donated um, diabetic socks to all of our clients, mm-hmm. and we had a sock hop. So. Uh, the two volunteers dressed up in like fifties attire, like the poodle skirts. Right. You know, it was really cute, and the clients got <laughs> glasses, and we had a DJ come in and play fifties music. So they oh, that is a awesome. Sock off. Yeah, they get up and dance. Yeah, it's really sweet. Uh, <laughs> we used to uh, not to toot my own horn, but I'm going to anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a senior living place years ago. Um, I think it was in Essex, but that's always been my dream was to DJ events for, for the seniors. Mm-hmm. And I'm going years back because it was more of the big band stuff, okay. yeah. but they loved it. Yeah. I mean, and we yeah. actually, one of the seniors kept hitting on one of my DJs. Or <laughs> and we went back there for years and I don't even know if it's open anymore now. Mm-hmm. No, our clients definitely love entertainment. Yeah, they do. And That's music. Good. And visitors. Yeah. They just like people that come in and we talk to them. We have a pet, them. And, um, a therapeutic pet yep. that comes in and, um, Visits with the clients, they get to pet it, you know. Oh, the oh yeah. the dogs. What is the Jane? What is it? Is it? Oh, I forget what the name of it is. The dog. The dog? I don't know what in. kind of dog yes. it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. I seen there was a lady I seen that had one of them, and it, oh god, <laughs> they love. The actually, it was for the. Have, yeah. I saw her at the um, the Unity tour, for the for the um, sheriff's deputies yeah. up there, and she had a dog up there. Mm-hmm. Yep, we love that. That is great. Right, and we get them out into the community also. We take field trips. Um, oh, really? A couple times a week, we have field trips. Um, the families uh, are, are let, you know, we let them know um, if they want their loved one or, you know, person right. that they're caring for go on the field trips. And um, it might be to the dollar store. It might be to a local restaurant. Sometimes they take, a, I think it's funny, a mystery ride. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to, um, you know, like, a mystery, mystery ride. ride. <laughs> like somewhere in the community, um, and they don't tell them where it is. And, you know. Yeah, it's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> but they get a kick out of it, you know? Like, they really do. <laughs> Yeah. Usually it's an ice cream. Yeah, and I see a treat at the end. Yeah. yeah. So they like that as well. Yeah. Hey, before we start, you mentioned something about veterans. Mm-hmm. Are you a veterans program or something? Yes, we have a veterans program um, that we started this fall. Um, it was kicked off on Veterans Day, and it's the Harker County Comrade Project. And um, the veterans that come to us who receive VA benefits can come to us two days a week covered through their benefits. Um, so the Comrade Project is a scholarship that we set up um, for veterans. So um, we're trying to raise funds for this scholarship um, to provide veterans additional days of care. 
um, if uh, you know the VA benefits cover those two days, but if they were interested in coming to us, you know, three, four, or five days a week, right. that this scholarship program would cover. Now, with veterans, because you said with the seniors, it's what fifty-five yes. up, right? Mm -hmm. Is it the same with veterans? And the only reason I'm asking is because I know some veterans coming back from Iraq or whatever. Mm -hmm. Their state of mind is completely different. Sure. We can, we can take anybody over the age of 21. Our okay. regulations allow us to. Our programs are just geared towards um, an older population. Um, it's not that we can't take care of them. We just want to make sure they're, we're meeting their needs. Right. Um, so traditionally, folks that are um, you know in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, they don't tend to enjoy the same kind of activities as the older adults um, enjoy because that's really where our activity programming right. is geared towards. Okay. Um, but that's not to say we wouldn't consider somebody that was younger than 55 for our services. Um, we would just want them to come and spend a trial day with us and you know learn about what their needs are to make sure that we would be able to meet them. Now, are you guys a 501c3? Or? We are. You are? Yeah, we're a private nonprofit. So, so you're always looking for donations absolutely. as well. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. As, and that's what this Comrade Project was really geared towards. Um, the, actually, in the fall, we kicked off um, two campaigns. One was a 1,000-day campaign um, to provide subsidized days of service for clients that couldn't afford um, our regular private pay rate. Right. Um, and then the other was the Hartford Comrade Project. What we find with a lot of vets that want to attend is, um, you know, it's about a six to eight month waiting period right now for benefits through um, the VA. That's traditionally what we're seeing yeah. folks are waiting for. Um, and, you know, some family members need services right away. Um, so we developed the Comrade Project in particular to raise funds for those vets that wanted to start attending but might not be able to afford the full private pay rate. Hmm. Send me your information because, I mean, how do you get a lot of people, the public donating to help out or... I mean, is that always hard? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So it's difficult, um, and I mean, the the difficult thing really is is getting the word out there that right. we're in need of these um, need of these funds. So traditionally, um, family and children services um, being you know the organization that we work for, this is just one of their programs. Right. We serve all of Central Maryland, um, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, Carroll, Hartford, and Howard. Um, so this program in particular has. Um, has really over the past few years lost a lot of funding around the subsidized days that we're able to provide. So um, three years ago at this time, we were providing about 3,000 subsidized days. Um, this year, we're down to 400 subsidized days. Yeah. So wow. we've gone from subsidizing about 30 people um, at one time, and right now we're currently subsidizing four. Um, so we've seen a drastic decline in our census because people aren't able to afford the private pay rate and we're no longer able to subsidize them. Um, so the thousand day campaign that we kicked off was really an effort um, this year to raise um, about $75,000 for fiscal year 17 that would directly support the clients that are in need of subsidy. Um, so we're able to offer a sliding scale. The problem is that funding, again, only covers four people throughout the year. Um, and we have many more than that that need our services. Um, so the thousand day campaign was in an effort to raise funds to help anybody that came to our door regardless of what they could afford to pay. Um, and then the Comrade Project sort of spun off of that and was really about making sure that we had funding particularly for veterans. Um, in Hartford County, at one time, our uh, population of our adult daycare center was about 30% of just vets. Um, we've seen that decline to about 15 to 13%, um, really because of funding. Vets that, you know, are waiting longer on waiting lists or can't afford. So something you think um, would be a tense. good thing, dropping numbers is actually a bad mm, thing. Absolutely. Wow. Yep. Yeah, it means that we're serving less people. Um, so our capacity at, at the center is 45, um, but we're at only averaging right now about 24, 25 a day. So we really want to get that up to about 32, 33 a day that, so that we're utilizing the capacity. And that funds will help there. Absolutely. We have people that want to attend um, and that, you know, want services but aren't able to necessarily afford the services. So huh. um, we're hoping these campaigns will, will help to provide some of those dollars. Any information you have on that, send to me. Absolutely. Because I always believe that one of the things that I get upset about this a lot um, when it comes to advertising, it seems like I hate seeing 
nonprofits have to pay for advertising. Mm, to me, it's, <laughs> I, I never understood I it. I, well, I, I never understood. And people, some people argue with me about this. You know, you know, well, they get, it doesn't matter. They're there to raise funds to help people out. Why are you going to take money away? Okay. And I never understood that. So any information you got, Absolutely. whether it be banners, whatever, send it yeah. to me. And actually, I think I'll do this. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and start a separate nonprofit page on HartfordCountyLiving.com. Mm -hmm. This way, people can see, get the information, go there, and because there, I think, well, there's a lot of nonprofits, but a, and a lot of them are hurting for money. Sure, absolutely. And, and yeah, yeah, I know. I, I tell you, I know you. I mean, I mean, it's, it's it's sad. Yes. Um, and I think a lot of people get scared. Well, I don't want to donate to this one, you know, because they take so much, you know, stuff like that. But either way, people, it's still you're helping people. Sure. And a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, and for us, I mean, we're the only, so we're the only nonprofit medical adult daycare in Hartford County. Um, so we're it. There's one other um, adult daycare, but it's a for profit. Um, so they, uh, they don't offer subsidy or sliding scales. Um, so for us, you know, one of the reasons that we kicked these off was because we felt like we had a strong commitment to provide these services. Right. Um, but we need community support to help us raise that funding as well. So. Now, is there a website people can also go to to they find can, out more? Yeah, www.fcsmd.org. FCS, Family Child yeah. Services, so fcsmd.com. Yeah. Dot, 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 dot org. Dot org. You and got we it. always welcome people to come in and take a, a, we call a share day. And it's a free, you know, trial day that they can come and spend a couple hours with us, like maybe, you know, from like 10 to 2. Yeah. And see if they like it. Mm -hmm. Now, what about, the, say, the general public? Can somebody just... Like, could I go yeah, up there yeah, and, and visit the place? Yes, and yes. We do you guys ever have, like, an open house so the public can come <laughs> no. see? No. I'm just saying, we had I'm a just veteran's thinking, open house. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking of different it's ways for the other people in the community yeah, to see this, sure. to see how you guys need help. Yeah. Yeah. Not just for, not just on a monetary basis, but even with volunteers. Absolutely. Because it seems like that's... Uh, I, I'm, in a way, I, I, I guess... I don't want to do this, but I'm, I'm seeing it less and less in the schools where I remember when I went to school, you had to volunteer a certain amount of hours, to pro but I'm not seeing that anymore. Yeah, we always encourage people to learn more about us. The more people that know about us, we feel like the more people we're going to be able to serve. Right. Um, so people absolutely can come and tour with Julie and yeah. learn Now, about do you guys, Definitely. some people have to talk, one, you mentioned Bel Air Lions, like to the Lions Club, yes. yeah, the Rotaries and the all Lions that. Yeah, we Lions Club um, in January. I think okay. it's like January 6th. Um, so they're, they have a monthly meeting, so we're going right. to present to them. But if, uh, any, you know, any clubs that are out there, um, we're interested in talking to them. So. And this project was specifically for um, the local VFWs and the American Legions. Um, so Julie's been in communication mm -hmm. with them. Um, and then we attend local conferences and, um, you know, events that they have that are geared towards older adults so right. that we can put up a booth and right, talk right. about what we do. How, how are you doing with the, as far as getting in touch with somebody from the Legions and all? Good. Mm -hmm. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I've gotten in touch with almost with all of the commanders. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, if I can reach them, their hours are a little different. <laughs> that, that's good. Oh, the only reason I'm asking, and I'm not going to mention the name of the Legion, but yeah. the Legion I belong to, when we joined, we we never get a newsletter, no. n nothing. Mm -hmm. So we never, never know what's going on unless right. we go to a meeting. Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't know the meetings no. <laughs> because we don't get anything. Right. Oh. And I know... With the legions, the, the rotaries, lines, every which and the legions and VFWs is what surprised me. They're hurting for members. Right. You figure the legions because every you know all the veterans out there, they, mm -hmm. but they're even hurting. Yeah. Oh. Anything else to add? No. I think, I think that's good. it. Yeah. Timmy, yeah. Caroline, how you doing? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Well, I saw you at uh, you were doing something at Magnolia, planning. It, it was a um, service day through uh, United Way. Okay. So what's happening is that the um, United Way of Central Maryland, the Harford County Partnership Board, has become very, very strong in Harford County recently. We're very, very present. Yes. Um, they were very good at looking at the needs of Harford County and then focusing on what was viable, what could they actually make a difference. And that's how the... Um, the stability program came about at Magnolia Elementary School. So the um, 
the school stability program is a federal program. I mean, it is, it's a national program. Right. Um, so it's not something that we just decided to, to do here in Harper County. It's, best, it's uh, based on best practice. But um, our goal is to empower families to become more self-sufficient by focusing on the building blocks that make a family strong right. um, and a better life. So that's education, um, employment, housing, and health. Um, so our program works with families that are in danger of becoming homeless um, or in very unstable places in their lives. Um, and pro I, United Way was able to tell me that approximately 291,000 individuals in Central Maryland um, are living in households that are below the poverty level right now. How many? The exact number I was given was 291,819 individuals. Just in Central Maryland? In Central Maryland, which wow. is Harford, Anne Arundel, Baltimore, Carroll, Howard, and Baltimore City. So you can wow. see why our presence is, um, is why we're here. Right. And what our goal is. Um, but the main goal at um, the Family Stability Program at Magnolia Elementary School is we were seeing a trend of children who were homeless um, and because of that homelessness, they were moving from school to school to school, which right. really affects school success. And um, so we had to look at how can we keep these children in school? Well, if we can catch a family who was going along fine and then hit a bump in the road and the rug was pulled out from under them and all of a sudden they're behind on their rent, they're behind on their BG&E bill, so they go live with grandma right. or they go live with aunt or best friend and the child changes schools and then they move to another house, another house, and they end up in all the schools in Harford County in one school year, um, that's not good for the child. No. So this, this program addresses the need of keeping the family stable. So what we do, I, the families that work with me, they have to have some sort of income. Um, and they have to be able to show me that if we um, help lift them out of that crisis that's happening at this moment, um, and get them stable again, that they'll be able to, they'll be back on the road of stability. So this is not long term, right. although the family does have to commit to work with me for about a year, because we aren't gonna cut a check to your landlord and then send you on your way. We want to use the skills that we have in this program with best practice of looking at, um, you know, making some good financial decisions. What can you do differently to increase your income, how can we help you do that? Right. So that that's what we're doing. This year, I've um, I can help 20 families in a year. I right now I have 13 families in my program. And you're pretty new, right? We started in July. So. Wow, a lot of people don't realize what effect, how how much that can affect a child too, moving from school to school to school. I mean, not just the well, education-wise, it, but... It's not just the movement. When you come home and your family is told that you have to be out of the house well, yeah. by 4 o'clock, um, you take the clothes that you need and you take your book bag. You don't, you don't take your favorite blanket. You don't take your mementos. You don't take your trophy that you won. So these children lose mm -hmm. more than just a bed to sleep in. Um, and that does affect them. Um, and also the prospect of... When, when their family is being told that they have to be out by a certain date, um, children read their parents very well. And so if the parents are nervous and scared or angry, or whatever is happening in that home, it reflects in the child and that reflects in the classroom. Right. So. Wow. Now what kind of, I, 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 I cheated, I got my cheat <laughs> sheet here, but you <laughs> provide workshops and everything as we well, do, right? We do provide workshops. Um, and actually this Thursday night, um, we're starting at what's called a parents cafe. It's just an, a, on Thursday night we're having a parents cafe of some invited families that have been successful in our fam in our program, and um, we want to hear from them um, what what made them successful. How did they find the drive to be over to get over that crisis, um, and not just have magical thinking of okay it'll go away it'll get better. Right. Um, how did they face it head on? What worked? What didn't? Um, but also, what were the blocks? Like, what stopped you from being successful? How did you get in that situation in the first place? In hindsight, what could we have addressed um, before this? Right. Um, 
to help you. And then we're going to plan, um, starting in January, uh, we're going to plan some workshops. Uh, we're going to let the um, families drive it and tell us, do they want to meet weekly? Do they want to meet monthly? Um, and what topics, what, um, who do they want to hear from in our community that could have supported them better? Who did a good job and needs to do more, <laughs> needs to do more of that? That's a, so, so you're actually getting them involved. Right, we wanted to belong good. to them. Um, I've never been homeless, right. luckily. Um, I can read all about it in all the books. I can be trained in everything. But I need to hear from them what's working in their lives. Um, one parent was telling me the hardest thing for her right now is balancing what to tell her child and what not to tell her child. So we might have a social worker wow. come in and talk about that. Um, so some things are common sense that would be hard, yeah. but um, I'm sure there's some information on how much to, information to give your child and how to, how to deliver that information, how specific to be. Yeah, and so, I guess with that too, they got to be careful because kids can read between the lines sometimes too. Yeah, so kids are and very... And they learn in spite of us. They learn to cope in spite of in spite of us. <laughs> but um, but we do still need to give them tools. Right. Um, and we do need to reflect um, the best way to handle situations like this. But um, we've also adopted um, twenty families for Christmas just in my area. But Caroline mm -hmm. might be able to talk mm -hmm. more about. Yeah, we still have five families available in Harford County um, to be adopted for Christmas by a, by another family, by a local mm -hmm. organization or business. Um, we have all the information on them of, of um, what they're looking for and what they need, but I was just told yesterday that there still are five more that are in need um, of adopting that we have identified. We work with Tammy's program and we work with the county government and some of the other organizations to identify who we need, who we need to target. Um, and so we still are looking for people to adopt families for the holidays. So very gifts and stuff like that. Gifts that's, and, mm -hmm, yeah, right. mm -hmm, that's a great mm -hmm. idea. There's one um, that I was just told we we typically keep the gifts uh, for the families under forty dollars. But mm -hmm. I did have a local uh, business step up to buy a young man a bike. He's fifteen, oh. and all he wanted was a bike to so he could get to school, so we could get to his friends, so we could get around. Um, and he has several younger siblings, and he gives everything to them, so he never get, takes anything for himself. Wow. So this year, he's going to get a bike for That's Christmas. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're very excited so. about that. You need to have that young man come and talk to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's a good role model mm -hmm. for some of these younger kids to look up to. Actually, Absolutely. even for some adults to look at. Right. Right. Wow. Now, do you guys look for volunteers as well? We do. We okay. always need volunteers. We do always need volunteers. We have several um, several different ways that you can volunteer. We have different events. In Harford County specifically, there are two big ones. We quarterly have what we call Stone Soup, which is held at Bel Air United Methodist Church. They have um, a food pantry once a month. And once a quarter, United Way volunteers go and we get about 50 volunteers and we go over to the church and we make casseroles and take them down to those that are waiting for their monthly food. It's one of the few places that they can actually get a protein also. Yes. Um, and it's called stone soup. Stone That's soup. what we call it, stone soup, based on the kids' book, stone soup, where you put everything <laughs> together you, to yeah. make something. I was going to ask yeah. about that. Yeah, so I'm still thinking, thinking yeah. uh, so, okay. If you want to feel good about the community you live in, you need to volunteer and show up there one yes. day. Yeah. Um, and it's a wonderful, wonderful um, family um, experience to take your children um, and let them see um, how to serve in their community um, on a one-to-one -one basis because um, as we finish the casseroles, we load them up on a, a big trolley and the children will actually go with us to deliver it in the hall to the people that are waiting, hundreds of people they get about that are waiting for people feed. A month. And the children can actually see the people who are receiving the food. Right. It's not Careful. reading them a story or having them put a quarter right. you know, in a, in a bucket. Right. Right. Um, they can actually see the, the people in their community that they're serving. That's done once a month? We do it once a quarter. Once a quarter. Once it, a happens quarter all the over, mm -hmm. it happens all over um, central Maryland, okay. um, but in our community in Hufford County. Mm -hmm. So the next so. one will be in February. I don't have the date yet, but I will definitely send along. And then yeah. Homeless Connect. Right. And January, January 24th, we're going to have our second annual Project Homeless Connect, which is a one-day um, event where we bring all the services that those experiencing homelessness might need under one roof. 
So we have medical services, we have mental health services, we have um, dental vision, uh, we have, we're, we're increasing our dental clinic so that we're going to have about 20 chairs to physically do dental extractions and things there. Is that People, at the epicenter? It's at the year? epicenter. Okay. Yep, it's at the epicenter. We, we did it last year for the first time. It's been in Baltimore for five years. Last year was the first time we brought it out to one, another community. It was during the snowstorm, during Jonas. <laughs> so it was a little crazy. Um, it did have to get postponed. But because of because of that, um, we saw a lot more kids than we thought. We had 440 people come through the doors that day, 150 of which were kids. Wow. And one of the things that we've learned through United Way, um, through the Homeless Connect, is that if you ask um, a family that's facing homelessness or somebody who is homeless, um, if they have a dental issue, they will pick having their dental issue addressed over a safe place to live mm, because um, it, it's horrible. You can't do anything. Yeah. You can't, you can't do, do anything. anything. Yeah. Pain is the worst. It affects yeah. all part, every part of your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Absolutely. But at that event, I mean, we have somebody there taking family photos to give to them on site. Mm -hmm. Um, we have people providing ID. haircuts. ID is a big one. If you're if you're homeless and you don't have an ID, how are you going to get a job? How are you going to get a right. place to live? You need identification, so we're able to provide that. And the cool thing about that is uh, it is a volunteer experience as well. So as the, the families come in, each adult in the family is paired one-to-one -one with a volunteer, and we go over all the services that are provided that day. You prioritize where they need to go and physically take them to the different services so you get to know the family you get to know what's going on and you get to really see the impact of what you're doing um, and and what the needs are in the community and it doesn't just stop that day because they make appointments with other community right. services um, while they're there to follow the services that they might not even know existed we, we have people helping write resumes and apply for jobs right there apply for mm -hmm. housing all that kind of, all you guys had a good turnout right last year mm -hmm. it's a big event we're expecting about 500 people this year going to be in the same place at, at the, the, the center, center January 24th okay, no snow no <laughs> snow <laughs> not going to work that's a four letter word I don't like to hear uh, now, for, I get, and this is for both of you talking about volunteering kids are allowed to volunteer as well right or yes. no? All right. For some, events, they can. For some, for some events, events, yes. What about for you, Julie? I mean, we have a little, we have a granddaughter that comes in with a grandma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't, um, if they're under the age of 18, we would want them to volunteer with an adult. Right. Um, right. But yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Our clients love children, mm -hmm. so any opportunity for intergenerational activities is right. always encouraged. Yeah, the reason I bring this up years ago, I, um, because, you know, I'm with the Lions Club, and my son and daughter, I told them for Christmas, I said, let's do something to help other people. And they volunteered, and now they do every, like our breakfast and everything, they volunteer to help, you know, whatever they can do. Sure. But they, it seems like, and I hope everybody listening, there's a good gift to give your kids. Sign them up to volunteer for something, mm -hmm. because once they see the joy sure. in somebody else's face that needs that help, mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no greater <laughs> feeling. You can get a new bike. You can get a PlayStation, whatever. Yeah. But to see the smile on somebody's face that hasn't smiled in a long time, yeah. there's there's no greater gift yeah. to me. I mean, that's that's the way I feel. So Yeah. In um, Carroll County, so we also have an adult daycare center in Carroll County that's just like the Harford County Adult Daycare. We have a partnership with a local private school called the North Carroll School. And so their children come out once a month and spend about an hour doing activities and crafts with the older adults, and it's mutually loved on right. both sides. So um, absolutely, we would welcome any opportunity Good. like that. Good. Yep. Uh, so January 24th is yours. Yes. Hopefully I can find a parking spot this year. <laughs> we, we, have, we, have, we have parking solutions. We are, well, we we are going to shuttle some people. Well, they also had all the barriers up there yes. last year. I don't think they have yes, them there. They don't anymore. Do they? No. Okay, good. No. Uh, it, yeah, it, it was, oh, yeah. but it was good, too. Uh, how many homeless pe families or people did you have show up? Do you know? 440. 440. 440 individuals. And that was a one-day event? One day. That's amazing. And so those are people who are your people that you, you know, are in tents or living in the woods. Right. They're, they're all the people in the transitional shelters. Um, and it's the people such as what Tammy serves that are on the brink of homelessness or who are living with aint and uncle, grandparents, friends. Um, and that was all Harford County folks? That was that all Harford County. County. It was Harford wow. County. Now, uh, and we talked about this before we started recording, about the, 
the different types of homelessness. And yeah. I don't think a lot of people understand that. Can you explain that? Sure, Tammy, you want to explain different homelessness? Well, the home homelessness that I would serve are people who um, they would have a job, but they don't have permanent housing. Right. Um, so they are living with a relative um, or they're bouncing back and forth. But then that's different from the HUD homelessness right. of um, that you do not have a, a safe shelter at night. So, so you still, even though that, the, I guess it's the HUD number mm -hmm. that the county projects. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Which is lower than what it has been, but the, I mean, well, four hundred and forty people at last year's event. Yes. that's still a lot. That's a lot. I mean, that's it's a still lot of people many. in need. Yeah, of services, way too many in need of services. And the great thing about um, the whole point of Project Homes Connect is to, to is to tear down the barriers. Right. So we don't follow that definition. If you right, show right. up and you need something, we're there. Um, right. We don't and, ask those questions. And what we do is we have all those services in the room because a lot of times, let's say you're working shift work. Mm -hmm. And you need to get your kids to and from school, right? And you need to apply for housing, but they're only open 9 to 5 and they're closed from 12 to 1. How are you going to get there? Right. How are you going to get there? How are you going to get to the grocery store, get everything you need in one in, in that one day and still and still juggle everything that you need to do? Mm -hmm. um, so we bring everything there, and so everything there is provided. And they can. it's not just, here's a flyer, here's a number to call. It's, we are doing this here and now. Wow. Now, have you had the chance to get out and talk to, you know, for the stability program, talk to other organizations within the county? Um, yes, yes. Okay. So, like, um, um, I can't think of the name <laughs> for there. The um, Harvard County Action Agency. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've really partnered with them a lot um, because that's the uh, first place people should go for any kind of crisis here in Harford County. Um, they can do the fuel fund. They have a food pantry. Um, they can, they're can. they aware of every other service that's available in Harford County. So that's kind of the single point entry for Harford County, and they're located in Woodbridge. Right. Um, and then I've also worked a lot with the, a lot with the diff different churches that are in our area. I've gotten to know a lot of people. Um, As you say, probably the one right down the road. Yes, Doctor they've Christian. been very helpful. Um, Is that Adam? Yes, yes, the Harford County Housing Agency has been really great at teaching me the ropes of what all the different HUD programs are and how do you qualify and how do you renew, those kinds of things. Um, I've worked a lot with the Salvation Army out of Habit Grace. They have responded to me um, quite often and when I've sent my families there, um, they've been very accommodating to my families. So And things like the library, you like, oh, like the, the library. We went to the library. Um, all the all the local libraries have been very interested in opening their doors and allowing us to use their computers to write That's resumes. Um, they've been wonderful about um, meeting with me, um, making connections with families to come in for computer literacy kinds of things. Um, Harvard Community College has worked with us for um, some computer literacy, financial literacy. Um, so yeah, we. The, um, the community has been outstanding. There hasn't been Good. anybody that I've called um, and explained what I need. Um, one of the things that I'm working on right now is I have a dad um, who came here from Puerto Rico. His mom brought him here because um, she wanted a better life for him. Mm -hmm. um, but then things fell apart. Um, and he has a mechanic certification. He has a certified mechanic, but it did not transfer from Puerto Rico to the United States, which doesn't make sense to me. Um, so he yeah, cannot it's... legally work as a mechanic here. So he's working in a he's working in a factory making a minimum wage when he he's qualified to make a lot more money. He's trained to make more money to be able to support his family. Um, but he came to me for help. Um, and one of the things that one of our goals that I've made or he made um, was for me to help him find a way to transfer that to lift him further out of poverty. Right. Um, and it's really hard because he has the skill, he doesn't have the piece of paper. So um, some I've worked with a couple of our local dealerships um, and they're trying to help me. That's weird. It, and they don't, they're not gonna profit from it at all. Right. Um, unless they, he comes to work for them. <laughs> but they want the, the um, private industry has been very supportive. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, 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 that one baffles me because you figure from Puerto Rico. Right, it doesn't I, make sense. No, it doesn't. So, 
but you've already reached out to a couple of dealerships mm-hmm. that are helping out. What right. about any of the local garages or anything? Um, we have a couple of local garages that um, they haven't been able to help me, but they've been really helpful in, um, it's hard to find an honest um, mechanic that uh, we'll work with and not, you know, take advantage of some right. of, the, of some of the families. Um, so we have identified a couple um, in the area that will only fix what that family needs to have fixed and give them the best price. Um, there's one. Um, I don't have the name in front of me, but there's one family um, in the area that they donate so much of their labor per month and only charge um, for the actual um, part or equipment parts. or whatever parts right. that they need. But um, oh, wow. just out of the goodness of their heart to give back to the community, they do so much work per month that's donated. The labor is donated. That's um, great. So Now, as far as other people in the community volunteering and helping or donations, what I mean, you obviously you guys are looking for donations too. Right. Um, but what can well, we do have other, websites? We have the United Way of Central Maryland dot org, or it's UWCM, UWCM, UWCM dot org. org. <laughs> um, that's where they can find all of the information. If they get on there, they can join our newsletter. Mm-hmm. Um, they can um, register for things such as Homeless Connect. Mm-hmm. Um, is that also where they register for? Um, the stone mm-hmm. soup. So absolutely everything is. I just love there. that name, Stone Soup. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come. I'm going to have to now. <laughs> That's fine. What'd you find out today? You got to let me I know. Will, I will. I will. Okay. to you. Um, and then the other program that United Way um, is known for is all, throughout all of Maryland, we are in charge of the 211 helpline. So 211 is a 24 hour uh, day, seven day a week helpline that anyone can call uh, who's facing any kind of crisis. Uh, the, the representatives there we speak uh, 150 different languages and are connected to over 400 resources. So my power is about to go out. I don't know what to do. Um, Meals on Wheels is supposed to come, but it's snowing. I don't have food. What do I do? Um, I just got an eviction notice. I don't know where to turn. I what just do I listened do? in the other day, and um, there was an elderly woman who called because uh, she had rats in her home and and she had done everything she was supposed to in her home she, this was a Baltimore City phone right. call she had done everything in her home that she was supposed to to help keep these rats out but the city had not taken care of the problem outside of her home and she had fallen during the night trying to kill one of the rats and she just oh, kind of had hit her limit and the woman the 211 operator was able to give her like three different resources of who to call um, and how to take care of this problem. So not only did she not live in fear anymore, but worry about her safety um, of, of um, hitting these rats with a broom and falling. She had fallen the night before. Wow. Um, but the resources are out there, and this is a way for um, United Way to have it on a screen in front of them. And then they follow up with the phone calls mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to That's see, true. did it work? Because they want, they want their... Um, their phone base they want it to be correct they want the database to be correct so there are over a hundred thousand calls that come through every year over a hundred thousand calls wow. that come into that 211 helpline um and through that we're able to tell where where the data is coming from who who's calling from where right. but the needs in baltimore city are different than the needs in hartford county are different than the needs in carroll county all they need to know is the so, zip code yep and if they don't know their zip code the the, the uh, operator usually can figure it out from what they're telling them. <laughs> and then we're able to work with the local nonprofits with their programs and say, okay, this is the need we're seeing and we want you to focus on this. Or if there isn't that program there, we're able to provide that service. Our nonprofits, um, the, the boards, the community boards, partnerships are what really drive what's mm-hmm. happening in our community. Right. Yeah, that's one thing, and I, I don't know if it's missing in. Harford County or Maryland, or if there is one, is there anything like a convention where all the nonprofits or people can get together and mm-hmm. meet each other? Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. is. There's um, there are a few of them. There's one in Harford County specifically. It's the nonprofit uh, advisory luncheon that's once a month at McGurk's. M- McGurk's. Uh, it's the third Friday. Julie, do you remember? I haven't gone. Yeah. Is that Patrick? Mm-hmm. It's Patrick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's that one that is Patrick all Chambers. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all the local nonprofits can get together. And it's just sharing. There's one featured nonprofit and a featured topic or speaker. But people can talk and get to know each other and say, I need help with my board. I need help finding volunteers who has ideas. Um, and then on a, on, on a bigger scale, there is um, 
there's a couple through Association of Fundraising Professionals in Maryland. Um, they put on a couple different events, uh, Philanthropy Day and um, and Fundraising Day. And then the Maryland Association of Nonprofit Organizations does a conference every year as well. I have to get a hold of Patrick then. And see He's if very involved. Something yeah. on a bigger scale because that's, I, like I said, there's a lot of them in right. the county. Yep. And you know, a lot of them don't know about each other. Exactly. So, I mean, churches help you. So mm-hmm. why not have something where all the churches mm-hmm. and all the not, and mm-hmm. everybody can come together, mm-hmm. the rotaries, the line, and Talk everybody that, should be able to help too. each other. Yep, right. That's, 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 that's one of Pat's goals. I'll get a hold of him. Actually, I, I, I got to get a hold of him anyway, so I'm supposed to get him on the podcast. I wanted to explain, too, that um, my program is part of the Judy Center at the Magnolia Elementary School. And the Judy Center is a program that serves children in that area, in that catchment area, children birth to five. Um, what, and it's the same mission to support families, provide stability in the families, but also to help the families be the best parents they can to make the children successful in school. So the mission of the Judy Center is for children to enter school in kindergarten ready to learn and um, on target rather than spending their kindergarten year playing catch up right. with um, just general knowledge, um, book knowledge, um, those kinds of things. So they work with families to provide the resources that are needed um, so children meet their milestones um, beginning at birth and that they're ready to go when they enter kindergarten. Now, how long has that been there, the Judy Center way? This is their third year. Third year, okay. I, I didn't even know about that, and I live here. Right. Yeah, if you, have, if you live in the Magnolia Elementary School um, district and you have a child between the ages of zero and five, and you know, get in, come into the come into the building and ask for the Judy Center. Um, they they run a program that's called um, Getting Ahead and a Getting By World. Um, we just finished a session. They meet twice a week. Um, it's it's all about exactly what you what it says: getting ahead and a getting by world of um, what resources are in your county that can help you raise you up. Um, and take that next step. If, if if you're here and you want to be there, what resources are in your county to help you do that? Hmm, so. That's good. Ow. Sorry, my knees are cracking. That's old age. <laughs> <laughs> I stand up, I sound like a bowl of rice I know where Krispies. you can go for some coffee. <laughs> 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 does, any, do anybody, does anybody have anything to add before we wrap it up? No. Yeah, no, thanks no. so much. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Was actually pretty quick. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, and once again, I want to tell everybody listening if you want to be on the Harford County Living Podcast, it is free to be on. We do not charge. Um, it's another way uh, of giving back. Um, whether you're a business owner, organization, an individual, just come on in, promote yourself, promote your business, uh, let the county know about it. Um, just contact us. You can call us at 443-982-0250 or email podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. And hopefully everybody has a great holiday. I know I will. I, although I have a funny feeling that guy in the red suit is still not going to bring me my English bulldog, but <laughs> that's all right. And I want to thank the uh, Job Town Lions Club for the use of the building. Um, I had to get board approval when they said okay. So mm-hmm. I want to thank you all again and have a great holiday and thank join us again too. next month. Thank, thank you. you. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. 
They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Baltimore's Best Roofing Contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 